Hi there and welcome to this episode of Consciousness Motherfucking Empowerment. Here we talk about consciousness and how to reach your dreams. Today we're going to talk about the Edinburgh Lectures on Mental Science by Thomas Troward released or written around 1904 okay i'm gonna read the preface for you so you have an understanding of what this book is about okay quote this book contains the substance of a course of lectures recently given by the writer in the queen street hall edinburgh its purpose is to indicate the natural principles governing the relation between mental action and material conditioning conditions and thus to afford the student an intelligible starting point for the practical study of the subject okay mental action and material conditions okay we're talking about manifesting okay we're talking about creating your thoughts into reality everything you have around you has been the thought your Fucking breakfast. Your coffee was a thought. You thought about getting a coffee, not like you don't. You're not like a a fish in the ocean that just okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not thinking. I'm just uh, I just I just go around like mouth open and just eating all the plankton. No, you think um oh, should I have orange juice? Should I have water? Should I have coffee? Should I have beer? You know. I'm not recommending you do beer though, because you know like why, why you gotta do beer in the morning? You know you, you want your mind fresh and alert. So. Before we get started, I'm going to go over this chapter, chapter one, which is spirit and matter. Okay, chapter one, spirit and matter. It's going to be a good one. But before we get started, two questions. Okay, I always ask these questions, okay? If you're new here, welcome. <clears throat> welcome. I don't know why my throat cracked right there. All right, welcome. Now, I want this to be the best experience you can have studying this material okay so ask yourself one are you ready to learn and apply what you're learning i'm doing it my fucking self i study this this is like the first time i'm reading this book but i study it and i apply it okay so you have to study you can be ready to learn and apply it if you're not ready to be open-minded to learn and apply. Get out the gym, okay? Metaphorically speaking. If not, take a step forward. Number two, be open to listening to your heart, to your conscience, to go after what you truly desire. Because you say, man, man maybe I want to get a, a Camry. No, nothing wrong with Camrys. I have two Camrys. They're awesome cars. I always, I always use this example. But your heart wants, I don't know, a truck or um, a BMW. A lot of people like BMWs and Mercedes for some reason. They love them. I don't. I, they look like right, basic cars to me. You know, I like cars that have a little like, oh, uh, like they look, they have this kind of look to them, you know, like aggressive look. So go after what you truly want. Don't go after the thing that all oh, you think you can get. Go after what your heart truly desires. That's where you learn to manifest. That's where your best fucking life is at, okay? So if you're ready to do that, listen to your heart, listen to your conscience, step forward, metaphorically speaking. If not, get out my gym. Let's get started, spirit and matter. So in this chapter, Thomas Troward is talking about spirit and matter. The old way of thinking of spirit and matter is that spirit is something that's alive and then something that has spirit in it, right? Like you could say uh, a goldfish, a dog, a little boy, yourself, you're living. And then a, a rock, a table will be dead, right? No, that's wrong because it's not moving, right? Everything has atoms in it and it's moving and it's vibrating at a rapid speed. It'll make a train look like a slow ass fucking slug. That's how fast everything is moving and vibrating. 
it's vibrating so fast, okay? Let me share this here. I don't need to look this up because I know everything is made out of atoms. Everything's made out of energy. We studied this in elementary. If you didn't go to elementary school, everything is made out of atoms, okay? Little particles of electrons, protons, and neutrons, okay? Energy, essentially, it's energy. And it's in everything, even light, okay? It's light waves, okay? Um, like, don't quote me on that. I'm not, I'm not a quantum physicist or anything like that, but I know that atoms, now there's some newer tests, atoms, it's called the split test. When atoms are not being looked at by consciousness, by a mind, it is a wave. So it's not even physical. Until we give it con like conscious attention, it becomes solid. So everything you're looking at is, is a kind of a, what's called a virtual reality. It's not physical. It's kind of like when you play a game and you like, everything in the back is just like, you can't see it. And you kind of you turn to it and then it kind of comes back. It kind of blurs and it comes back. I don't, I don't know if you play video games, but that's what happens. Like when you're looking at it, it's, it's focused, but then everything on the side kind of looks blurry and far away. You can't really see it until you lock on it and it kind of gets um, solid. Okay, it gets solid. Video games are like that a lot. In, real, in, in physical reality, like I could look at a tree over here outside my window. I'm here on the second floor so I can see the tree. And I can st still see, I can still kind of see the stuff a little bit clearly of the things in the background, right? I can still see things kind of clearly. But in video games, they're, they're like really blurry. That's what literally happens with atoms. When you're not paying attention, the ones that are behind you, things that are behind you, they're waves. Unless consciousness is looking at it, so it's actually there. All right, so we're going to go on. So that's the first part of the chapter. And he says the difference... Everything is alive, okay? Everything is in movement. Everything. The way we can determine the degree, okay? So dead and alive, we got to get that out the window, okay? Everything is moving. Everything's alive. The degree of livingness is something that we can determine. Because you can determine the livingness of a rock, goldfish, a dog, a boy, and... You could say, uh, you know, an adult, right? A, a little boy has a certain consciousness, but depending on the age of the boy, it's the boy is either ha low level of consciousness, right? Can't really think for himself or herself because everything is just brand new. And there's one, you know, a teenager. Teenager can make better decisions than than a, a five year old, right? The five year old may may want to touch fire. A teenager. You know, a 15-year-old knows, all right, I'm not going to touch that shit. I've been burned. But a little kid is like, oh, what is this? And, tss, ow. I burned myself. And they start crying. <laughs> and they start crying. All right. So the level of livingness and intelligence, okay? That's where we can um, determine livingness. And here, I highlighted this. Quote. Pay attention. The plant, the fish, the dog, the boy are equally alive, but there is a difference in the quality of their livingness, about which no one can have any doubt. And no one would hesitate to say that this difference is in the degree of intelligence. In whatever, we, in whatever way we turn the subject, we shall always find that what we call the livingness of, an, of any individual life is ultimately measured by its intelligence. It is the possession of a of greater intelligence that places the animal in a scale of being animal higher in the scale of being than the plant, the man higher than the animal, the intellectual man higher than the savage. The increased intelligence calls into activity modes of motion of a higher order corresponding to itself. The higher the intelligence, the more completely the mo the mode of motion is under control. And as we descend in the scale of intelligence, the descent is marked by a corresponding increase in automatic motion, not subject to the control of a self-conscious intelligence. Yeah. You see how intelligence plays an important factor in the degree of livingness? And here, here's another...
Quote, for these reasons, we may lay it down as a fundamental proposition that the distinctive quality of spirit is thought and the distinctive quality of matter is form. This is a radical distinction from which important consequences follow and should therefore be carefully noted by the student. Okay. Spirit, the quality of spirit is thought. The distinctive quality of matter is form. So we've gone away from um, living spirit and dead matter. Okay, we've gone away from that. Now we've gone to thinking about um, intelligence in living things, okay? The level of intelligence. And then uh, the difference between spirit and matter is that spirit is intelligence. It is thought, okay? It is thought, So we've gone from spirit to thinking about thought. The title should have been called Thought, Thought and Matter. Thought and Matter. Okay. Because now he's using thought interchange interchangeably with spirit. Okay. And the difference between thought and matter is that matter is form. Okay. There's form in matter and it is in time and space. Okay. Matter is in time and space. It is form, it is matter, it is in time and space. A thought is not in time and space, so it, it is in the ever-present now. Where there is thought, solely thought, like imagination, there is no time and space. Therefore, you have that thought now, exists, existing now. Therefore, you have everything that you want right fucking now okay thought does not exist in time and space it is in your possession now so if you can form a thought something in your imagination okay it is yours right now there is no time and space in the spirit in the in the thought realm hope that's making sense now now i want to quote him right here um it's very important it's going gonna, it's gonna to be reiterating what I just said to you, all right, in his terms. Quote, form implies extension in space and also limitation within certain boundaries. Thought implies neither. When, therefore, we think of life as existing in any particular form, we associate it with the idea of extension in space. So that an elephant may be said to consist of a vastly larger amount of living substance than a mouse. But if we think of life as the fact of livingness, we do not associate it with any idea of extension. And we at once realize that the mouse is quite as much alive as the elephant, notwithstanding the difference in size. The important point of this distinction is that if we can conceive of anything as entirely devoid of the element of extension in space, it must be present in its entire totality, anywhere and everywhere. That is to say, at every point of space simultaneously. The scientific definition of time is that it is the period occupied by a body in passing from one given point in space to another. And therefore, according to this, this definition, when, it, when there is no space, there can be no time. And hence, the, that conception of spirit, which realizes it as devoid of the element of space, must realize it as being devoid of the element of time also. And therefore, find that the conception of spirit as pure thought, and not as concrete form, is the conception of it as subsisting perfect, perfectly, independently of the elements of time and space. Your consciousness is immortal. Your consciousness, okay, is immortal. The ever-present now. Because the thoughts that you entertain and the images you entertain are not yourself. They're thoughts that you can mold. They're things that you can use. You can think of right now, look at the positive of what's around you. Or you can do the contrary, look at the negative that's around you. But 
I warn you not to do that because then that'll become a habitual way of thinking. Of course, be real. Do not stand in front of a fucking train. All right. Be rational. Do not stand in front of, in front of a fucking train. Okay. All right. We're here to live. We're here to enjoy. Look at the beautiful world, the sky, the, the, the lights, the body, our energy, our vigor. Okay. Our vitality. It's life. Okay. In us. And our level of intelligence, we can, we can see and feel consciously. We're not automatic. We're not just thinking automatically and doing things randomly. We can choose consciously. We can choose consciously. Now, I'm going to share one more uh, quote because it'll be um, used for manifesting. Okay. From, okay, quote, from this, it follows that if the idea of anything is conceived as existing on this level, it can only represent that thing as being actually present here and now, end quote. Anyone, he says anything, right? But anyone that can, that can create a thought, okay, any idea, it means that it's existing right now okay right fucking now present here and now okay now i'm gonna continue quote in this view of things nothing can be remote from us either in time or space either the idea is entirely dissipated or it exists as an an actual present entity and not as something that shall be in the future for there is for where there is no sequence in time there can be no future where there is no time, there is no past and, and future. It's just the now. So the thing that you have now is is either entirely dissipated, okay, because you stop thinking about it, or it exists as an actual present entity. Okay, so you feel the thing that you want. When you manifest, you're feeling it like you already have it. So when you're feeling it, you're having it because you're entertaining the thought. You're having it, okay, now. So you know you're only attracting good things when you're feeling good, okay? And you're in control of this. You're in control of this. Your mind, your thoughts. Okay, you control of your mind. Okay, you, and you're in control of your thoughts. Now you may be getting excited. I know I really got ex really excited when this happened. But Thomas Trower tells us not to get too overly excited. Just be calm. This is where we do our breath work. Be calm. <sighs> be at peace. That's where. That's where. When you're at peace, that's where you can actually live and enjoy life fully and presently fully and presently every time i do that i'm like wow this is the best moment of my life every time i say that like I'm like every time i'm like wait it was the best moment of my life yesterday and but it's because i'm present okay similarly where there is no space there can be no conception of anything as being at a distance from us when the elements of time and space are eliminated, all, all our ideas of things must necessarily be as subsisting in a universal here and everlasting now. And he says this, quote, This is no doubt a highly abstract conception, but I would like the student to endeavor to grasp, grasp it thoroughly, since it is of vital importance in the practical practical application of mental science as will appear further on okay and a little bit of here this is the last thing it says the, the opposite conception is that of things expressing themselves through conditions of time and space and thus establishing a variety of relations to other things as a bulk distance and direction or of sequence and time only in the physical, do we have big, small, time, relative, the gestation period, waiting for the thing to manifest, and all these other things, right? Um, time, you know, going from A to B, all that stuff. That's only in time, that's only in the physical, okay? So, and he, in the last part, he just talks about what I had mentioned in the beginning, you know, don't, don't be too ideal and don't be focused too on the physical. Let it balance, okay? Have like a balance of it. 
uh, uh, Paramahansa Yogananda also says this, okay? He's, um, he wrote the autobiography of the yogi and scientific healings, which talks about the mind, the soul, okay, the body, and having uh, perfection in all of those areas of good health. That's why it's called scientific healing, and it gives you a bunch of affirmations. I did that today, this morning. I did it. I read a bunch of affirmations that I had written for myself before. And yeah, they resonated with me. They're still the things that I'm, I'm pressing my mind with. So, what I wanted to say about um, the Yogananda is that he says, take the medicine. If you're sick, of course, use the affirmations. Of course, visualize yourself, but also take the medicine. Okay, because we're also human. We're also physical. Don't solely rely on one thing. Okay, you would only solely rely on one thing if you were only one thing. But we're not. <clears throat> um, same with money, right? Also do the work. You know, don't just do the affirmations. Do the work also. You know, you, you want to become an athlete, don't just visualize, do the work, put in the work. You want to become a college student, a top performer in your company, don't just visualize, don't just visualize, do the work. Do the best fucking work that you can. All right. So like getting in shape and building muscle. But in time... When you visualize it so long, your, your, your body like transforms. You cast a spell on your body and then you start taking the action. And it comes so smoothly. You start, you start following the hunches and you move through time and space uh, very, very, very easily. But it's always important to come back to the present, to be at peace and just move through, through the physical reality at peace in your heart and mind. Okay. So I commend you for being here. This is very, I don't want to say the word challenging because then it'll create it that way. But it is very rewarding work. Everything that you do can be challenging if you say it is challenging, but it's very rewarding work because it changes you from the inside out and allows you to create whatever the fuck you want. But you must understand this, understand it. And apply it. I was fortunate enough to understand it through, you know, visualizing while I was incarcerated. So I had a lot of time just to think. Okay, so that's a bittersweet thing, you know. It's a bittersweet type of thing. Um, manifestation can happen the same day. Manifestation can take some time. We don't know the, the time period, but, you know, you have it when you're feeling it. Feeling it in consciousness. It's all about changing your consciousness, okay. There's levels of consciousness that we want, we change, we change states. So see, of course I have this thing, you know, of course I have it. So whatever it is that you want, right? Think about it right now, okay? Think about it right now and see it in your mind's eye, kind of like double, like right here, you're present, but you also see it, you can see it in your imagination. I'm smiling now because I can see the money in my bank account, okay? You have it now, it's here now. It's here right now. So take a deep breath. If you can see it now already, that's good. Now close your eyes as well, because it also helps. So close your eyes, see the money there. Or see your health now. See your lover now. It's already done, see it? you see yourself in possession of it. It's not here, it's not over there. And when I say here, I'm always pointing, you know? It's here now, it's in the ever present now, when there is in the mind, in the thought realm, in the spirit realm, there is no time and space. Everything you want is here now. You have it now. So be grateful for it. And thank you. And how do you feel that you have it now? Sit in it. Of course you have it. Of course. It is yours. I 
Okay, I gave you five seconds to sit in it. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you like this one. On the next one, we're going to do chapter two, which is, where are you, chapter two? Um, I just realized I have my hood on. It's kind of cold right now. The higher mode of intelligence controls the lower. Woo I already know what that's going to be about. So that's going to be the next one. Stay tuned for that one. I love you. Till next time, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If somebody came to mind, came to heart, okay, share it with them. Okay? I love you. Until next time, peace. And comment anything below if you want me to go over it a little bit more in depth.